If you or someone you know has ever struggled with addiction, you know that it can feel like you're fighting a losing battle. That's why one of our next guests is working so tirelessly to help stop stigma and save lives. We're being joined by President and CEO of Emily's Hope, Angela Kennecke. Mm -hmm. Along with Angela is Karen Dumdai, the Marketing Director and Co-Owner of Autoland. They're here today to show us that the fight to end stigma around addiction can be fun by filling us in on the latest partnership between Autoland and Emily's Hope. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank it's you. Just great to see how active and Emily's Hope is in the community and it does so much because it raises money but it also raises awareness and like what a fun partnership and fun way to get around it. Yeah, this has been fantastic. We've actually partnered with Autoland for a few years now on a car show. We had that in conjunction with the Poco Run, but this year we split it off. Yeah. And we're doing a cruise night with uh, Great Plains Hot Rodders at Autoland, and Autoland yeah. is the main sponsor. Okay, yeah. so for some of us, we might not know what a cruise night is. <laughs> I, need a, I need a little bit of some help here. Okay, great. So the Great Plains Street Rodders uh, do this on a regular basis where they have cruise nights at different locations. And so they chose Autoland this time and then to make it... Um, uh, an event for Emily's Hope. So they come and it's um, a variety of people, whether you have a classic car or a late model car, that it's a collector basically or something that's a showpiece. Um, and they park them and show them off to each other. Um, you can bring any type of car, any age or model. And you don't have to be a member of the Great Plains no. Street Riders. Anybody can bring their cool vehicle. You know, it has a, like some qualifications, right? right? It has yeah. to be yeah. kind of a cool or a novelty type vehicle, um, an older one probably, but it could be a current one. And just come and park and set up uh, before around five o'clock. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. you don't even have to be doing that to participate, right? Like, we can all come in and oh, enjoy. Sure. It's for the public. It's open and right. free to the public. Yes. Because there's a lot of cool things you probably don't see on a regular basis if right. you're not going to some of these fun, like, get-togethers. And a lot of people don't have the cars, but they like to look at the cars. So um, spectators of any number are welcome, any age, um, you know. And we're going to have a grill out, too. So that's going to be also all the proceeds from that. So it's $5 for a burger or hot dog with chips and a drink. And all that money goes to Emily's Hope. And there's some other fun ways that you can continue to raise money for Emily's Hope, too. Let's right. We'll have a 50-50 raffle. So we'll sell raffle tickets. And um, we usually do wingspans. So yeah. <laughs> I think it's $20 for your wingspan. And then we'll do the drawing at the end of the night. And someone will get half of the money. And the other half will go to the charity. So that'll be fun. Um, we'll just have a lot of, you know, some great people out there. And just really a good time. It goes from 5 until the, the last vehicle leaves. So And there's uh, also still some tickets left for the side-by-side, um, -side, right? That's right. This year, we we are raffling off a Can-Am Defender, and we're selling 300 tickets total. There's 123 tickets left, and once those 300 tickets are sold, we'll be doing the live drawing on Facebook, and the tickets are $100 a piece. I mean, it's pretty cool. And with a limited number of tickets out there, you actually have a pretty good chance of winning. Your it's chances a solid are investment. Yeah. yeah. When you're out at something like this, it does put a different audience in front of you sometimes. And so do you feel like you often have these connections and conversations with people too that you mean they maybe came out because of a car but there's a connection to addiction i think everybody has a connection to addiction we're all affected or touched in some way um, it affects at least 10 percent of the population and some people say it's actually greater than that so we all have somebody a relative a co-worker maybe even ourselves who have suffered from substance use disorder and so i think the more that we can talk about it more the more we can destigmatize it the more we can see it as a disease of the brain um, the better we could be at treating it now let's talk about what some of the money raised is actually doing within Emily's Hope. Right. So for, well, since 2019, we've been giving out Emily's Hope treatment scholarships through the Avera Addiction Care Center. We've helped nearly 200 people go through treatment there. They're partial treatment scholarships that helps pay the bills or pay the deductible or that kind of thing. Plus, we've developed K-5 through education curriculum, and that is going into 50 schools in five states this fall. We piloted it last year. We're super excited about the number of schools taking it this year, and we're continuing to develop six through 12 as well. That's really exciting and you're doing such amazing work. When you say that a scholarship can go, a partial scholarship goes to something, what are some of the other things that it's been used for? Because I've heard some really, you know, stories of unique things that maybe you just don't think about facing when you are actually trying to get treatment and you want it to not be a barrier. Right. Well, the treatment is typically 28 days. And so people have to go into treatment. They may have to leave their job if they're hourly workers. And well, this our treatment scholarships will help pay for rent mm -hmm. um, or help pay an outstanding bill or something so they don't fall behind. So we also pay deductibles, like I said, and other are just partial, partial treatment. But um, it's, it just depends. So it's a case by case 
these spaces. But I mean, honestly, if you're thinking about getting treatment, you may be thinking that there's a barrier there for you. Like, if I right. do this, I'm going to not have this hourly wage or I'm not going to be able to pay this piece of this bill and I'm going to have a really negative effect. And so maybe I just, I'm going to try to handle it on my own. We want to take the excuses away. Right. That's really a big part of it because we know that a um, big percentage of the workforce is affected and you want your employee to go get treatment. You want your loved one to go get treatment and we want to remove those barriers. Let's talk a little bit more about the partnership with Autoland yeah. and, and go over the event details one more time for everybody too. Okay. Um, so it's this Wednesday, July 19th, starting at 5 o'clock. Go till about 8 and um, bring any type of car um, to show or come and just look at the cars. It's open everyone. There's no charge to bring your car and show it. Um, we'll have people there directing you where to park and everything like that. And if you're just there to watch, um, that's great. And um, like I said, we're going to have a $5 meal deal, which is great. These days you can't hardly get a meal <laughs> yeah. for $5, but all the money raised goes to Emily's Hope. And that's either a burger or hot dog with chips and a drink. And um, we'll be grilling right there, so it'll be fresh off the grill. And the and partnership with Autoland has been really wonderful. Over the last three years, they have supported Emily's Hope every year, and it's been really fantastic. Yes, we appreciate it, has. it. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's worked out well. As Angela said, you never know who's going to be affected. Um, we do have a banner that we hang up, and we've had people come in and um, say they want to, you know, help and contribute money because they know that we support the cause because mm -hmm. there's so many people that are affected. And when you actually get to see the effect of what these, these fundraisers do, how do you feel? It's um, very good. Uh, it's a reassuring feel. And, you know, we know it's already going to a good cause. But when you see how it does help others that you don't even maybe realize that it's going to help, you know, that's even more of a, I guess, seal of approval. Or You know, I think like a lot of time I mean, for me personally, I maybe didn't have a personal connection as closely to me. But as a mom with a friend who loses a child, there's just something about always wanting to rally around that because you just never know. You never know when that's going to be you, and I think you can probably identify with that as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, yeah. It's a terrifying thing to think about. We want to yes. protect our children. Obviously, my child, I lost my child, but I want to protect other people's children, which is a big reason for our prevention curriculum as well. Right, and so being able to be part of that and yes. walk alongside Angela and, and think about our own children and Absolutely. The ch their friends and everybody that's going to be have access to the curriculum or even just maybe have access to the treatment scholarships, it's really a meaningful thing to do. Yeah, and for the kids to learn about it. I mean, you know, knowing what they're possibly going to face, you know, as they grow up. Um, because when they're younger, they're like sponges, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, they, yeah. they absorb it better. So well, hopefully it sounds like an amazing event. Everybody go out there, get some food, see some cars. Yeah. See Angela. It's going to be great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.